Hey guys, Robbie here, how are you? Today we're going to spend some time looking into the MV Play Pro app, which is designed for Wendy's product. Please note I'm mainly going to demonstrate on an Android phone. The layout is slightly different between iOS and Android, but not by very much. You will be able to figure it out yourself. Let me start by saying please brace yourself. It's slightly complicated and can cause confusions. At least for me, that is. I will try to construct my language and help you to get better use out of it. Now, without further ado, let's go. We start by connecting the MV Play Pro app to the device. Turn on the Wi-Fi on the scope by one short press of the GPS slash Wi-Fi key. When you see Wi-Fi ready displayed on the top right corner, your device is set to go. Next, take your smartphone or tablet out of your pocket or bag. Update your Facebook or Instagram for the last time before you lose your internet. Yes, I nearly kept a straight face. But seriously though, you're going to lose internet connection while using the app. Hence, if you're watching this video online right now and intend to follow the steps simultaneously, may I suggest you change your tactics. Either watch the whole video first or play this video on another device like a tablet or PC which has its own internet access. Just trust me on this. Now, once you have that arranged, go on check if your mobile data is switched off. Make sure it's off. Then go to your WLAN list look for E52P or E53 at blah 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 or similar sort of weird looking available network that'll be the one connected to it the default Wi-Fi password is 128 once you are connected you can then get into the app if somehow you're not connected to the scopes Wi-Fi the app will stop you to go any further and ask you to go to phone WLAN setting instead Here's the main screen of the app. Let's start with the setting tab at the bottom left. You have clear catch and language options. Clear catch allow you to clear operation data backlog. Very similar idea like you're cleaning browsing data on your Chrome or Internet Explorer. Realistically speaking, there's not much data there and won't consume much of your phone storage. But it is recommended clear it on a reasonable regular basis. Just a recommendation anyway. And now the language option. This lets you choose the app display language, either in English or Chinese. That being said, the app can only be properly operated with these two languages as the smartphones or tablets system language. Please be aware. Let's come back to the home tab at the bottom middle. This is where all the main features of the app are located. Start with the play button at the middle top. This basically lets you see scope views through your smartphone or tablet screen. Mirroring probably is another term you can describe this. Some practical uses of this function from what I've gathered including but not limited to 1. Put the scope on a stand or tripod to remotely monitoring slash recording of certain objects or geographic area during day or night. 2. Share the scope view with your companions. They can see your scope view through their smart device live. In two words, show off. That's my first thought, but maybe it can be beneficial to ask your companion to monitor the screen while you mind some other business. It, it makes sense if you think about it. Three, in a prone position or through a car window, instead of maintaining the posture to look through the scope, which either can cause fatigue or rather uncomfortable through a prolonged period of time get a big tablet take the prone position as an example place the tablet on the ground underneath your head with the mirroring not only you are looking at a much bigger screen with both of your eye that allows you to spot the details better your neck is also taking less stress since you don't have to raise your head up and lean in a specific way. It does sound like a much comfortable way to conduct a shooting business and some people do take advantage of that. After all, it's a digital scope. It's capable of doing something unconventional. There are a couple of criteria and limitations you need to be aware of with the mirroring though. One, maximum signal channel of the scope is six. 
Yes, it means the skull can connect to six smart devices simultaneously through its integrated Wi-Fi. However, this will create extremely heavy load on its CPU, which can cause severe image delay and burns battery like no tomorrow. So it is possible, but not very practical. Personally, I didn't even test it to go more than two devices since it wasn't necessary for my use. And mind you, even with one device, it can still have impact on your battery life. But do feel free to test it out what suits you. Two, the maximum Wi-Fi transmission distance is 50 meters in a perfect world. Means the mirroring device can receive image transmission at 50 meters away from the scope. In the real world though, it really depends on actual geographic environment and electronic interference of the area. So in urban area, I haven't even tested, but my limited household knowledge, I think you should consider lucky if you can get 10 meters. In rural areas, it depends on how complicated the terrain and surroundings are. In open playing field, you should get a pretty good distance, but where dense woods and veggies are presented, not so much. From what I gathered, a rural area in average, 20 to 30 meters should be pretty reliable, but don't quote me on this. 3. Wi-Fi transmission has delay. There will always be a delay between the scope view and smart device view. In theory, it should be 0.3 seconds. In practical reality, you're looking at roughly up to one second. So if you are dealing with fast moving object, this might be a deal breaker for you, but it is what it is. Uh, in most other situation, it's bearable. Some other image transmission delay, however, may not be due to Wi-Fi transmission. Like what we just discussed before, if the CPU of the scope is under heavy load, it will cause processing delay. Same apply to the phone CPU or you know the smart device CPU. So for example, I got a very old iPhone, sometimes the iPhone itself, because it was so old, and uh, it has difficulty to you know to cope with it the new android phone i got which is fine and the noise reduction function in the app which we'll discuss very shortly when turned on can also cause processing delay these are the things you can look out for when you experience unreasonable image transmission delay before we go through how you actually use mirroring, let's talk about the other features and setting. Later, we will do a practice run with these features included. There is this adjustment tab underneath the play screen. Inside is where you'll find all these additional settings. Starting from the top, system information shows you the version of your scope software. In this case is V6.23.192. TF card. This displays your TF card full storage capacity and how much storage you have already used. Pretty straightforward. Now all the settings. Let me bring this up first. To change the setting you want to, for example, the cursor type, choose the option you like, tap finish, and don't touch anything for eight seconds. The eight second is quite important to avoid any possible confusions. After that, the setting is then saved and became default except video quality. This one is always default low. You do need to manually change it before recording. It's also worth mentioning that sometimes the setting you have altered doesn't reflect it on the app page right away. Again, wait for eight seconds, go back to the home page, tap that little refresh button on the top right corner and go to the setting again. Voila, we're in business. Now let's look at the setting individually format tf card this remotely purges your tf card content and change your tf card to the supporting format either way it purges your tf card clean press the setting it will ask you are you sure to format the tf card remotely please choose wisely 